Hello, everybody. Welcome to this live webinar. I have some exciting news for you. But before we get underway, I just wanted to kind of talk about a couple of things here real quick. Um, today, we're going to be talking about our exclusive training session. OK, so this is going to be pretty awesome. OK, so uh, pretty, pretty fun Okay, for everybody who's live here. All right. So first of all, let me share my screen here real quick. And I want to talk about the updates we've made to uh, Video Express. And then we'll go from there. So one sec here. Let's share my screen here real quick. Uh, and by the way, for those who are joining in in our group and other places as well, uh, I'll just basically put that up here just a sec. All right, cool. So, all right, here we go. Okay, I see Norman's here. I see um, our um, uh, other users here as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you hear me okay? Let me know in the chat box if you can hear me okay, then we'll begin here real quick. Uh, so first of all, let me actually put this up here real quick. And those who are joining in in our uh, Facebook group, uh, by the way, um i'll just put this up on the top here so you got, you folks can see it easily as well all right cool uh so today i'm going to be very focused on a singular topic and then we're going to go more in depth in our other training sessions as well so as not to go on and on for hours at length and not be able to focus on one topic at hand right so uh that's what i'm going to be focusing on today okay is that going to be fun or what because i have our video express hat here as you can see uh, so we're going to be having a lot of fun uh, with the application and that sort of thing. Okay. So uh, first of all, if you see the uh, uh, screen right here, we, these are all um, the uh, apps that we've uh, basically the updates we've made. So let me actually highlight them for you. So if you see here, the public gallery is now live. So some of you were away uh, for the Easter weekend and all that. Um, so happy Easter, by the way. I hope you're doing a lot of uh uh, fun stuff uh, with family. Uh, anyway, all right. So now the other one that we've updated over the last couple of days is prompt details uh, for the video in the public gallery. There's tutorials on this, by the way, and how you can utilize this, but I'll kind of walk you through that in just a second. Uh, you can also redesign um, uh, where you can redesign creations by other users. Okay. That's the other one. And then faster rendering uh, for special effects and stuff like that as well. Now, what I wanted to kind of talk about this is in particular is that we're making all these updates and notifying you in the latest updates as you log into the Video Express app. So that's one good thing. Now, the second thing is that you'll see the tutorials as well along with it. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about this update and then we'll talk about these other updates and I'll talk about the other main event today of talking about how you can um, util um, utilize some of the cool things uh, within um, the Video Express application and also some strategies to put it all together basically. Okay. Cool. All right. Excellent. All right. So now, first of all, the public gallery where it's located. So let me actually pull that up um, here for you folks is basically if um, first of all, then the, that's the public gallery and then also the video object removal as well as live. You'll see a tutorial on that uh, here as well. OK, I'll talk about that in just a sec. All right. Anyway, so the public gallery is this section right here. OK, on the top. So this is basically where you can check the community's designs, my designs, my videos, what I'm creating, my uh, projects and stuff like that. And along with other folks as well, what they're doing. So when you click on that, so this is how it opens up. So these are all the uh, you know videos being created by the community, right? So if you see here, you can play, this is gonna show you this. And then you can, what you could do is you can click on it, uh, the eye icon here, okay? Again, let me show you that. When you hover over it, you'll see this, right? Play it, download it, and then there's a little eye that shows up here, which is the information tab. You click on it. This is where it shows you, okay? This was the prompt utilized, okay? And then this was the type that was used, 3D type, motion, what, how much animation needs to be done in that particular character, medium, smoothness, medium. And then you can click on redesign and it will redesign. Now, if you think something is bad, we've also introduced something called the community complaint thing. So if some somebody uh, put in some um, you know bad stuff out there, you can report it and then automatically it gets deleted as well. And then also uh, we, you can basically, um, you know, um, for the user who created it, you can now make it private as well if you don't want it to show up if this is your content, okay? Anyway. When you click on redesign, okay, first of all, let's say you like something. Let's say, for example, let's say this one right here. You like this one right here. It looks awesome, right? So if you like this one and you want to redesign any one of them, you click on it and then you click on redesign and then boom. It's going to basically create that first frame again. It's going to uh, write the prompt again. 
It's going to pre-select the type, the category that was in, basically. And it's going to pre-select the motion speed level that was there prior. And basically, it's going to have pretty much everything, right? And then you can then you can make some modifications to this as you need in the prompt level. So let's say, for example, uh, it says uh, uh, a Coke bottle jumping with joy. You can say maybe Coke bottle uh, inverted and jumping with joy, whatever, right? You can make those changes um, and you can make the changes in the category and all that. And then you can just click on the create video now. So that way you got the best examples that other users have created. And then you got that basically to work, okay? So is that cool? Um, so that's the basic idea, okay. Now, the other thing um, as well that I wanted to kind of mention here real quick, if you go back to the public gallery here, let's go back here one more time. All right, so we've added a search feature here as well. So you can see um, ones which you're trying to create to get ideas, right? Uh, so that way, basically the idea is that, you know, if you have some good uh, options that are there. So let's say, for example, you wanted to create one which is more cinematic in nature or 3D style, anime style or whatever. This will always be uh, a good starting point, right? So there's one here. There's this cartoon styles here. There's this neon style. There's this one right here, for example, which is more like, um, you know, if you will, the Hobbit, uh, like Hollywood style one. So if I wanted to use her, right, let's just just look at that like beautiful right so anyway you wanted to basically use this right so what you would do is click on the eye and then this was the prompt right you see it's a little bit more uh if you will has a lot of stuff in it traveling through ancient fantasy lands with dragons and dwarves hobbits and beautiful female elves realistic light raw blah 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 right so if you don't want to learn all this stuff no need just click on redesign and now you can recreate the exact same effect right without you having to do anything so basically you click on redesign like so now it created this frame right so now what you could do is you can add some points to this right and you can make some changes to it you can even reuse the same character if you decide to do so so the ambiance and the uh, uh, the elements are the same so if you click on reuse you can do that if you wish right and it'll try to the best of its ability the ai will reuse the same person so what you could do is basically um Say, for example, um, a beautiful princess or whatever. I don't know. Like, whatever. It doesn't matter. So then you can click on uh, generate preview, right? And then uh, basically, yeah, whatever. We added this new terms of service stuff. You can agree if you haven't already done that. Anyway, so click on generate um, image preview. And then it's going to generate a new style, keeping the original elements, the stylistic look to it like that hobbit slash lord of the rings style and then it's going to create this right you see this beautiful right now you can create like a video from this keeping that existing storyline of somebody else's creation that you have the uh, the look and feel for it right so that's the basic idea that was the reason why we introduced the public gallery because oftentimes what happens right you want to create something like this but you don't have the idea in your mind how exactly you want it done so having somebody already creating it, like with that exact styling and that that feel to it, then you can actually recreate it like this. Then all I have to do is really, I can basically just click on the create video option right here and I'm done. That's it, right? Now you don't have to do anything more other than this, right? So this is the basic um, idea. Like this is the basic idea of the public gallery. This is why it's so powerful. With time, with more and more people creating stuff and uh, more and more projects created, this is going to become a little bit of a, if you will, a museum, a library, right? If you will, of all the best creations in the entire planet. And that way what happens is that it allows you to give ideas for your, uh, for your, uh, if you will, videos that you're creating, right? So uh, in this particular case, it has that look and feel of that, lighting you see that if, if, I'll, I'll just show you a couple of points so you understand so you see how here there is a little bit of a light shining in right this is what we like to call ray tracing okay this is like a term that is used in 3d modeling and all that you don't know that i don't know that i didn't know that until last week right but the point is that if you did, if you wanted that that little bit of sunlight hitting the face and all that the head or whatever that is ray tracing if you didn't know what it meant, then you cannot really recreate that effect, right? But on the other hand, now that you have, you see this right here, somebody already wrote ray tracing, right? You see that right there? Um, so that is how we basically utilize 
the creation and the entire creativity of the entire user base of um, the Media Express application and create it, right? So now what I could do is I could just click on create video now, and then now I can uh, start going in and creating more elements and stuff and putting it as a part of the timeline, right? So this is the basic idea, right? And of course, as I mentioned before, you can make the designs private if you wish, right? That's not a point, but if you liked something, like you created something great, uh, you're, you're, you want the community to benefit from it, pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome feature. Right. Uh, so the question was, Janica was asking, is there a way to create not to go public? Yeah, you can set it right right in this section right here. So you see here where I have that selection where it says share uh, this in the public gallery. You can uncheck this box, this box right here. You can uncheck it and then you don't have to do that. Um, but I do recommend if you have some of these creations that uh, have the community share so that way you can all benefit with each other. That was the whole reason it was created. Right. Uh, but anyway, that's the point. Right. You see this that same styling. Right, somebody else's creation, so to speak, same styling as brought in to my creation here. Now let's look at that, right? Let, let's let's compare so you can understand, right? So if you see here, she's wearing like the clothing style, which is like a little bit uh, like a jacket with a brown leather jacket and some hues there, right? Now same concept again. If you see same styling, right? Again, you see this the brown jacket, right? Maroon or whatever, whatever you like to call it similar styling right she's still blonde and all that other stuff right so it puts you that in that exact same environment right this is what we like to call not just consistent character but consistent environment consistent uh, topography if you will and consistent environment as well uh, very important because let's say you're trying to create um, a 2d anime style you don't want some 3d to come into the mix right you're creating something like this what i just showed you here you don't want like a realistic feel to it right you need you need a little bit of if you will imagination creativity here so that's how you can do uh with this process does that make sense and um yeah exactly exactly it makes it super powerful for inspiration and ideas and um and then love the community aspect it's so powerful to share and help each other out absolutely see what happens right and as you know, we are announcing in our Facebook group almost every day, new winners and stuff like that uh, for posting in our Facebook group. One of the biggest comments that comes in when the community posts, right? Uh, videos and stuff like that. Maybe you posted. A lot of people ask, what was the prompts that you used? Uh, what did you use uh, to generate that, that output? Now you can just tell them, hey, look, you know, what I did is just you go into the public gallery, right? And then you can basically get it from there. So you can go to public gallery and search for my my creation maybe it has some specific keyword or whatever and then you'll get it right and that's how you can basically have somebody replicate it without having to uh you know having to copy paste prompts and blah 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 right too much work right uh not worth it all right and now their other point okay is uh basically uh the other point i want to mention here is if you see the stylistic elements here right i only want to talk about this because the application a lot of people don't understand is Video, Video Express can create all types of videos, not just, let's say, 3D style or like um, cartoon style or like some human style. You can create different styles, right? Say, for example, if you see like this one right here, this is not exactly 3D. This is not exactly real. This is uh, uh, related. Like this one right here, it is a little bit cinematic in styling, right? You see this right here? That is a different style, right? Now, let's look at, let's say, for example, this one right here. I want to show you this. This is more what we like to call abstract 3D uh, filmmaking, right? So what I mean by that is this is not like, like this is a rabbit actually doing some actions here, right? In a world, if you see here, there's like a, uh, like a cyberpunk surreal world behind it, right? You see that? So the point I'm making here is that throughout this process, um, you have the ability to make those changes across, right? Across the board. So that is the other point. Like say, for example, this one, like what I just showed you earlier, right? So this one right here is a little bit more on that, if you're the Lord of the Rings and slash Hobbit, that kind of feel to it, right? Um, but if you see here, this one right here, so like, again, this is a little bit more on the other side of the equation, right? Like a little bit more cartoony. This one is as well, like this is more like a Disney style, Pixar style uh, element, right? So the point I wanted to make here, very important point I, I want to make is when you reuse a design, you're reusing the elements of the design, right? Like say, for example, this is a Disney style. I want to create a Disney style. I can reuse that that elements, the lighting, the, the uh, let's say a holiday theme that is here, right? Like it's Christmas holiday, right? You see that uh, if you see there's uh, 
there's bells, there's lighting here in the background. Like somebody is wearing, like you see here, uh, the Santa hat, like, you right? And all that, right? So you get the point, right? So that is the other great part about this. So that way you have that element. So now let's look at this one right here. This is basically like a turtle, but kind of like a turtle with uh, underwater, right? So it's a different stylistic element. Like you can go in and you can check this. You'll see this right here. These are all the styling, the elements and stuff. And it'll give you some great ways to replicate this, right? One of the users created that. Um, and it gives you really good uh, ideas on how to go about doing it, right? Now, similarly, again, you have all these other styles, like this one right here. Let's check this one out. Um, this one right here, right? You see this? And so on and so forth. As we are improving the technology and as things get better and better, this is going to be even more powerful because now what's gonna, uh, what it's going to allow you to do is, is, is now you have a catalog, if you will, a library that you can basically utilize in the long run, right? And that's what we're aiming for. Like this one right here. I love this one. I, it just looks awesome, right? This this cinematic look to it almost looks like um, you know like an animated uh, movie. Well, let's look at that one. So what was used here? Let me just redesign this one right here real quick. There we go. So you see that we redesigned it, and then as you can see here, when we redesign this, uh, we have her right here, like you see, okay, and we have the styling here. The image style was photorealistic here and no other style was used. Motion uh, was high, smoothness was medium. I mean, you can keep changing it and tweaking it, no worries. And now if you wanted to reuse uh, the same styling, right? You see how it says interior of cabin, shadows dancing on walls, uh, candlelit, rustic, old portraits, highly detailed, interesting, right? So on the other hand, now you don't wanna use a girl here, you wanna use something else. Let's say, for example, you wanted to focus on, let's say, uh, let's say for instance, um a bearded uh man in a right something like this you don't have to use the girl right you don't have to then you don't create uh click on the reuse the same character this part you don't have to select because i'm creating somebody different it'll still keep that original um elements of that image right the same rustic look the interior cabin you see that so it keeps that entire so if you're trying to create stories right you're trying to create like like a story and let's say a, a video with, which focuses on a specific styling, right? The lighting, the elements, the ambience and stuff like that. It creates those frames for you, which is very important. I'd say that's more important than reusing the same character because oftentimes we have these ideas we want to use, but like we don't know exactly what was the lighting style used, what was the uh, specific styling used for that uh, video or uh, that sort of thing, right? So this is where it adds up, right? And this is something where we're gonna, over the next few weeks, months and that sort of thing, it's gonna be the most powerful feature organically that we'll have in Video Express that no other application has or will have, right? Uh, with the community working together, right? And uh, yeah, this is what I was trying to explain. Uh, Lawrence, you could you could continue to redesign and edit different looks and scenes that create the video, 100%. That's the whole idea, right, uh, Lawrence? So the idea is that in this particular case, I had this gentleman created, right? So I continue on with the same styling, right? And if I didn't want a bearded man now, I wanted to say, let's say, for example, uh, a beautiful, um, I don't know, I'll just say Hobbit, <laughs> right? I'm just making it up, but I don't know. It just came into my head, but let's say, right? It's all right. Um, right, whatever. You'll have like a Hobbit created in that same ambiance, in that same setting created. You see this right here? Same lighting style, same feel to it, same uh, lighting with the candles, right? You see this? Uh, same cabin feel to it, right? And then you can create the whole uh, scenarios along the way, okay? So that's the basic idea, okay? Is that is that cool, right? And um, then you can make changes to it as you desire. You don't want to. You want to remove this stuff. You can add something completely different if you want to. Uh, you want to completely change this elements. You can do that. You get the point, right? It, it basically you have a canvas to start off with. Now, say for example, in the negative prompts, let's say you don't want uh, something. Let's say, right? For example, in this particular case, I have a whole bunch of uh, let's see here uh, chairs, right? Let's say I don't want chairs in my uh, in my in my scene. I can just put chairs, right? And then put let's say chair, I don't want a table. I don't want a table, right? Then you can decide what you don't want in the negative prompt and you can generate it based on that. So you see this, I don't want a chair or I don't want a table to show up. Well, this is what, there we go. There's no tables here. You see this? 
in this image. So that's the basic idea. You can remove elements based upon the negative prompts, what you want uh, to remove or add or whatever, okay? If you want the person to be removed too, you can do that if there are multiple people and stuff like that, okay? And that's the basic idea, okay? Now, what I want to do now is basically I want to talk about uh, some of the other uh, stuff as well. So you'll keep seeing all these features that we're adding as soon as you log into the application, right? So uh, whenever you log into Video Express, we're adding all these new features. And also, by the way, when you go to the Tutorials tab, you see this Tutorials tab here on the top? This is basically where in this Tutorials section here, that's where we basically will add all the tutorials here, right? And mm -hmm. we're also giving you the link, uh, if you see here, um, let me show you this. So we're also adding you the link to watch it on YouTube. So in case you want to add, um, you know, let's say captions or subtitles and stuff in your language, you could do that, okay? So that's the other one that we are uh, uh, working on. You see this right here? Uh, you can check out all the other ones that are added in here and all the ones we're adding in new features along the way as well. Now. What we're planning on doing is in the next uh, couple of days, we're gonna be adding our roadmap. Now that we've added the critical key features in the application, we took your features, fixed some bugs here and there. It said, we're gonna add our roadmap feature coming up uh, in the next couple of days or so. I'll invite you into the other event where I'm gonna be revealing it and walk you through the main ones so for you folks to vote on and stuff and then make it grow organically from there. Uh, that's gonna be coming up soon. So the roadmap itself will be coming up uh, very soon as well. Okay, pretty cool, right? Uh, so let me know if any questions so far, let me know uh, in the chat box. I'll be happy to answer any questions you folks have. Now, one other thing I wanted to show here, watch this part, okay? Let me zoom this in a little bit. All right, so here, if you see here carefully in the, um, in the chat, uh, in the chat box, you can let me know. Here, as you can see here, pretty much, uh, let me actually bring this up here so you can see it, yeah. Okay, so you check this out here, here, we've added that object removal feature, right? So let's say, for example, you want to know how to use that object removal feature. You just go in, um, check this out. I'll just mute the audio here. So here, it's going to show you, okay, go here to AI videos, go to object removal option here, and then you can upload a video or an image. And then how do you basically remove? And basically what we did with the object removal, because it works so well with our videos, meaning generated from within Video Express, you can upload it and remove any objects that you don't like from the scene. So this was a new feature that got added in as of, uh, I believe, a few hours ago or yesterday or this morning, depending when you watched it. But anyway, you can select the element like so, right? And then you can remove that object. Basically, that's the basic idea here, okay? Does that make sense? So that's the tutorial. We've added that in, that feature is there uh, in the application now. You know how to use it. It's only focused on that one feature. And then you can now do it basically straight out of the gate. Pretty cool, right? Now that is the beauty here, right? So when we add these uh, features, you can now remove an object from a video that you created. Maybe you wanna make some uh, modifications and stuff like that. There we go. So you can see that preview right there, as you can see, um, and you can basically uh, remove the objects. There you go, the object is removed from that particular video, right? Pretty cool, right? So that's the basic idea, right? And uh, obviously the video scene length extension, that was the other one where you can double the amount of length that you can create with your videos that was also added in uh, recently, okay. Now, basically, what I wanted to do is, again, whenever you're logging into the app, right? So so whenever you decide to log in for the, uh, for the app, you'll see all that notifications and stuff show up within the application, okay? Now, what I wanted to kind of talk about right now is the end-to-end -end creation of the project, right? So that's something I want to talk about today. And then we're going to talk a little bit on the overview elements and some foundational stuff today. And then in the next training sessions and stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go more in-depth on it because you need to know the foundations first before you get into the more nitty-gritty stuff, right? Otherwise, you're going to basically run around in circles not knowing how to get the most benefit uh, from the Video Express application, right? Okay, so uh, basically that's what I'm going to... Uh, uh, basically focus on, right? Now, this is the thing. It's like Photoshop for video. Yeah, that's the goal. That's what we're aiming for in terms of uh, Video Express where we're headed. That's why we have the object removal. So the object removal, you'll, you'll see that right here under the uh, AI video section, object removal. So any video that you created, you want to remove an object from the video. So like, let's say, for example, I have all these uh, videos right here, right? All these that I created, if I want to remove any object from um, any scenes and stuff like that, well, you can use the object removal basically, okay? Is that cool? All right, that's the basic idea here. Any any object you desire, you can remove uh, straight out of the gate. You just select it and boom, it'll go away, right? So in that particular case, let's say uh, in this scenario, like say this one right here, like this is the video. 
I wanted to remove this person right here, I can do that, right? Uh, if I wanted to remove any elements, I can remove like this, the shadowy thing right here, I can remove that out, that person. So that's the basic idea of that object removal thing from the existing videos that you create uh, that is already in your media gallery created with the Video Express application, okay? So that's the basic idea. Now, what I wanted to kind of talk about is let's open up one of the projects here, right? So one of the key questions that comes in is, you know, this was the project I created, right? With that, with that perfume ad, right? So uh, let me just play it right now. Uh, you'll see it. So this is basically as a whole voice over here. It has uh, different elements here, like so. It has the transitions, it has all that. But the key component though, right? To make this whole thing happen is this track right here, okay? It says voiceover perfumes Sarah, right? So now what happens when you come to the application, right? People are like, where do I start? Well, so where do you wanna start always is basically what is the video about? Where is that timeline gonna be created about? And then how do you go about doing it, right? So. Uh, basically, that's the base basic concept, right? That's what we are trying to achieve. So let's go here. Let me let me let's walk you through this process here real quick. So how you would do then is then, isn't it? When you go into import media and let's say you're starting with text to speech, like so, right? This is the script that you would put in where the voiceover is created, right? And then you create the video. So if you're doing it for clients too, right? Uh, when I I worked on many client projects myself. I've done a lot of uh, VSLs, video sales letters, they're known as, and stuff like that. Oftentimes, the client will basically give you a script, okay, and some basic examples. Like, I want a video that looks like this one. I want to look like the video like this, like this, right? Always it starts with this script. When you have the script ready, then the whole workflow will make sense because now you know where to put what, right? So the idea, okay, and uh, the idea that we want to basically focus on, okay, and this is something that I wanted to mention here real quick, is that we want to solve what do we put here first? Am I right? Let me know in the chat box. Like this is step number one, isn't it? What is the script that we are uh, basically achieving? What is the script that we are trying to create, right? And so this is what we are trying to achieve. Or what do we put here, right? Oftentimes what happens is people are like, okay, this sounds good. I can create a prompt. I can create videos with it. Uh, but if I wanted to create a video for commercial purposes or to captivate somebody's attention and that sort of thing, what how do i begin right so it all starts with this so today what i'm gonna do and let me know in the chat box if you um if you would like to learn that and that's what we're gonna do and then i'm gonna build on top of it with other training sessions because if you don't know what to put in that box there and the correct thing in that box there okay then you're gonna be in trouble because you are gonna basically not know the foundational stuff right so what i wanted to kind of talk about and let me know if you want me to teach you this stuff how do you do proper script writing with AI, right? Because if you know this, right? And if you can understand this aspect, it will basically change the game forever for you, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the fundamentals today such that they are ingrained into you. So that way what happens is when you're using AI tools to write the script, the fundamentals are in place. Does that make sense? So that way when the fundamentals are in place and simplifies the process of what to put in there, okay? All right, then we can talk about, okay, how do we merge stuff? How do we add background music? How do we do this? That I'll create like an entire end-to-end -end workflow for you in our other training session, which is coming up soon, uh, the next one. But the point is, if you don't even know how to create this step, I can show you the entire thing and then you'll not know the fundamentals of how to apply it into different projects, right? Like my goal is not for you to just be like, okay, he created like this perfume ad or whatever. I'm just going to try to recreate the perfume ad. What's the point, right? You want to make sure that you're able to create any kind of project. You want to create a cartoon style video with a story. You want to write uh, maybe a children's book in video format you want to talk about. You want to create video summaries, let's say. Uh, let's say you wanted to create educational content, sales content content, you want to know how you start off it, right? Okay, so that's the basic idea. So first of all, let me give you like a little bit of a homework for those who haven't already, okay? So that way we can go from there, okay? So the homework is if you haven't already, go go here and get my copywriting course. It's free, 100% free, no opt-ins, none of that shenanigans. If you haven't already, go here, okay? This is the site. Uh, you can bookmark it and all that kind of good stuff. That's your homework, so to speak, right? The homework is just go watch this stuff. You don't even have to watch this first video. Go watch the modules that make sense for you, where you feel um, your strengths are lacking, so to speak, right? And and this is an entire course that's for free for you folks. So you can watch it 
in your leisure and you can re-reference it at a later date. But the key reason why I'm bringing this up is that I created this course specifically because of the fact that copywriting is the highest paying skill online, right? Because it's you're able to persuade, communicate, right? And be able to get somebody to make a decision, whether that decision is to buy your product or service, to book an appointment or to uh, basically go book a table in a restaurant or even, even apply a coupon on a website, right? Or even visit a website or opt into some, some newsletter, whatever the case is, you have to kind of make that persuasion happen, right? So a lot of times I've been studying copywriting as an art or a passion for over 15 years now, right? I've studied copywriting since when it was started back in the late 1800s, right? Uh, when they used to have these newspaper ads and stuff. And a lot of things are fundamentally similar, but the modalities have changed, okay? This is something that I wanted to teach you today so that you understand it and you can learn the highest paying skill on the internet right now. Uh, and that's because it makes sense, right? If somebody wants something, let's say a business, they want to pay you money to do a service for them, the more closer you are to the revenue of that business, the more likely it is that you can charge a premium for it, right? Common sense. Like say, for example, if I go into a business and say, look, I'm going to, let's say, clean your office, right? Right now, they're going to pay me an hourly rate of whatever it is somebody gets paid for cleaning it. And it's, it's minimum wage or whatever it might be, right? Now, I cannot say I'm the best cleaner in the world, so therefore pay me 10 times the money. No, nobody will do that, right? It's just not the way I set it up. That's not the way the world works, right? Just the way it's set up, right? You might say it's unfair. You might say, why is somebody getting paid more money than somebody uh, who is uh, working 12 hours a day or just somebody who's working lesser hours or so whatever the case might be, right? So on the other hand, though, let's look at the other scenario here. Somebody comes into the same business and says, let's say it's a dentist, chiropractor, or let's say it's even a law firm, or let's say it's an accounting firm, or let's say it's even an e-commerce company or whatever it might be saying, look, I know a way that I can help you improve your amount of sales or uh, let's say uh, your subscribers, your appointments or whatever. And then you pay me if I can provide that outcome. And if not, I don't want anything. Now, it's a little bit more likely that because you're closer to the results, it's more likely it is that you could probably help that business out. Thereby, they're more willing to hear you out of you charging a premium for that service, correct? Similarly, the same thing applies with you. So what happens is oftentimes people try to hire their way uh, to success, right? So what that means, in other words, is like if you're trying to grow your business today, right? The first person you're going to hire is that person who will help you get sales, manage sales or deal with your appointments or whatever it might be, right? The person who will get you leads, let's say, or whatever it might be. That will be probably the first person you'll probably hire if you wanted to hire. Or if not, it's even better if you can know how to do it yourself, it will help you even more, right? So let me give you some backstory of this, right? So when I got started back in the day, um, back in 2005, 2006, around that period of time, it was very easy to get Google rankings the top of Google, right? So oftentimes, like I, I would get some very tough to compete keywords today, which would be impossible. I would get them up on Google because it's such a new thing. It was like a, a very brand new thing that you could do. So uh, at that time, it was an open opportunity for anybody to do if they knew that skill. And that skill was where we never knew if Google would die any day, Yahoo could take over or whatever, right? You just had to know that skill set and then it helped you out. So what happened, and this is the thing that I teach in this copywriting course, is you understand the purpose of your copy, right? So what I did was, since I knew how to do that at back then, what I did is I started simplifying the process. Okay, let's break this down. What do we need to do to get top rankings on Google, right? So step one, you do this, step two, you do this, step three, you do this. And then basically what I did is I packaged it as a service and I would offer that to businesses. I even created a software later on to automate that process and stuff like that, right? At different stages. But for every little thing, I needed to show the benefits of it to a person who doesn't even understand why it is a benefit to them. Like say, if you go to somebody and say, oh, I'm going to get top ranking on Google for, uh, let's say, chiropractor in New York City. They don't, if they don't understand the benefit of it, or the value it brings, it's pointless, right? That's where it is important to understand copywriting, right? 
it is to understand how to persuade people. It, it's such a straightforward thing if you get it, but the point is there are some building blocks of understanding that. That's why I created this course so you understand, okay? So step number one, what I did is I gave the prompts as well, and I'll talk about these prompts. You can use it in chat GPT. You can use it in our text writer, some of the other applications we have and stuff like that. I'll show you that. Anyway, the point is that let's let's look at them in a, in a more, uh, if you will, logical and a practical example, okay? So the first thing that we have to do when we are trying to create a video, let's say, let's say in the case of, uh, let's say Video Express, and trying to create a blank screen you're staring at, what do we do? We gotta understand what's the purpose. What am I trying to do? Am I saying trying to sell an ebook? Am I trying to sell a coaching program? Am I trying to sell, let's say for example, my expertise, a service, a product, a digital product, whatever it might be. What am I trying to do, right? So we wanna first outline that, okay? What is the purpose? That's what I talked about here, right? And then the second thing is human psychology and persuasion, okay? So the irony of this is, right, and uh, this is what we like to call um, some strategies that we can learn in, in order to get somebody to take action on something, right? And the major issue people face oftentimes when it comes to, uh, let's say, any kind of video they create, and by the way, why video? Let's talk about that, first of all. 85% of all content consumed on the internet right now is video, okay? So in any way, shape, or form, whether it's your business, somebody else's business, or whatever it might be, what we are trying to achieve is we are trying to get somebody to watch a piece of content or a piece of advice or whatever we are doing. This is basically what we are basically uh, trying to achieve here, okay? Does that make sense? So that means, in other words, if I were to today send a newspaper to the younger generation, right, which grew up reading emails, I cannot reach them. They don't read it, right? The modality changed, but that doesn't mean the content is different. It's just that now they're more likely to watch on YouTube or on Instagram or Reels or Facebook or whatever, right? You're watching this in video format. Let's say 30 years ago, uh, you couldn't, right? The live streaming uh, technology was not there. So maybe you would watch a direct mail piece where it was sent in an envelope, but the content is kind of similar right? So the same thing that we're trying to do is the same concept here. So what we like to talk about when it comes to this is basically uh, human psychology and persuasion is basically trying to get somebody to take action because people will say hundred different things, but until they commit to some action, nothing will move, right? Like you cannot move mountains without like getting the first stone out, right? Same concept applies here. So the concepts here are very similar. And what we like to call here, what we teach, and this is something you can learn uh, in, that, in that URL, you can get it for free, there's nothing for sale, is basically the idea of micro commitments, okay? So what that means is that um, we just call that micro commitments, right, MC. So what a micro commitment is, okay, let me just draw this out for you so you understand this, and then you can watch it in detail how that works and all that kind of stuff. But the simple point is, with micro commitments, what we are trying to achieve in simple nutshell, like in a nutshell, is what we want to do is we basically want people to make one choice. Let's say this is the person, right? So let's say this is the person, like this is the person, right? Um, they need to make one action. Let's say they opted into a website, right? Like they opted in for more information. If they make that one commitment, they're more likely to purchase then if it is when you give them like a big commitment to do, like this one is like they read a big contract or something, right? More unlikely for somebody to jump to this stage without first going here, correct? So that's what we like to call micro commitment. So similarly, what we do, and a lot of times people uh, don't understand this aspect, and this is the reason why um, short form content like Instagram uh, reels, uh, let's say YouTube shorts, right? These one minute or under videos, right? They're perfect for this micro commitment strategy, right? Because you cannot have somebody watch a 30 minute video or whatever, right? Who never heard about you, never even seen anything about you and doesn't even know that they need a solution to be solved. You cannot have that without them making a smaller commitment, watching a 30 second video, 45 second video, a minute video about that subject. If they're convinced, they're more likely to watch other stuff, right? So the same reason applies even when it comes to video. You want to create short form video and then you can make them watch a landing page or watch a sales video or let's say a longer form video and stuff like that. Same thing applies. Does that make sense? Now, what you can do 
is in the chat box, write some industries that you want me to talk about, because I'll talk about this workflow for your industry right now. And then we'll talk about how we can create the scripts for Video Express. OK, so you can basically uh, let me know in the chat box right now and I'll, I'll cover some of those topics. OK, any any market, it can be any market, because I want you to understand how the mindset works. So that way you can use it in every other industry going forward. Doesn't even have to be uh, one or two industries or whatever. Clear. All right. So let me see in the chat box right now. And while you're doing that, OK, so we have, co uh, let's see here, coaching, uh, lead generation. Cool, cool. All right. All right. And uh, marketing agency says here, OK, cool. All right, let's type some more. Web design was one. Chatbot for local businesses. Cool. All right. OK, so now let's talk about this. OK, this is what I wanted to explain, OK, in greater detail so that you understand, OK? Because what I'm seeing here is tourism, web design. These are all service-based industries, right? Service-based, like you're providing a service of some kind. Um, membership site, very similar to coaching. Okay, dog grooming. Okay, fine, cool. These are all service-based, right? So what happens, right, in the service-based industries, let's talk about that. So um, let's say web design service that you're offering. Let's say you're offering something else. Doesn't matter, whatever the service might be. Understand that people... Inherently, and this is the key component of what I teach in the copywriting course, right? And this is free. Again, nothing for sale. I'm just trying to explain to you that if you're watching this course, understand the framework, right? So the idea is that how I go, my framework, okay, when it comes to web design, tourism, uh, mobile mechanics, so meaning you're fixing mobile phones. Uh, let's say, for example, let's say we're going after uh, coaching, lead generation, whatever. The assumption that I'm going in is I want to go and I want to create a piece, right? So when you're creating a video, let's say, for example, you create a video like this one right here, right? When I create a video like this one, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get as many people as possible to watch this video and as many people as possible to take action, correct? As many people as possible to watch this video, as many people as possible to take action. So what we like to call mass market, right? So how you have to approach this is that when I create something, like you see this right here, I'm researching my idea. I want to make sure that the idea is big enough, right? I'm trying to show the novel approach, state of the art, whatever. Let's talk about it. First step, okay? The first step that we're trying to achieve is I'm assuming the average person has already gone through 10 or even 27 other solutions like this, and thereby they're frustrated. It's not working out for them. And I have to portray to them why my service is better than that other 27 or 10 or 15 that they tried. OK, uh, this is because oftentimes I've, I've done the, the research on this and from experience as well. The bigger market is people who've tried stuff and it didn't work out for them for whatever reason. And they want to know why they should trust you now. Right. As opposed to somebody for the first time in their life that thought, uh -huh, I just woke up today and. Uh, let's say I want my teeth whitened, right? Or I just woke up today and I decided that I need web web uh, a website, right? Or I just woke up today and I need uh, somebody to do, uh, let's say, CEO coaching. Like I'm a CEO, I need a coach to help me, let's say, for example, right? Never happens in real life, right? It's more often than not somebody has tried something, they work out, like they've been drinking coffee all day, their, their teeth are stained, let's say, or in the case of, uh, let's say, uh, you know, let's say your pet, let's say it's dog uh, grooming or whatever it might be, let's say, right, they've gone into some other place, they didn't do that good of a job, and now you're wondering why, what's, what does it take to get a good result, right? You see my point. Generally, right, even if you're talking about, like Lauren said, marketing agency, let's say even that, they've probably tried they probably back in the day paid somebody to design a website for them. They probably paid somebody, um, let's say, uh, some amount of, uh, let's say, they invested time, money, energy, resources to set something up. Maybe it was a dentist or a chiropractor or whoever. They don't have time to go oversee somebody's work, right? Like they don't have time to go check, okay, you did split test A and B. Uh, uh, let's say you tried A and B and B performed better. Okay, awesome. Can you try C as a split test and then see how it works? They don't have time for all that. They're busy carrying patients, right? Uh, or in the case of a restaurant, they're busy working on their food or busy uh, working on their staff training to ensure that they serve food on time, the good quality food or whatever, right? So similarly, what we have to assume in every almost every industry out there, what we are assuming is that they're already tried other solutions that they did not work, okay? 
So that is the step number one. When you're trying to create a script, first step is to try to get somebody to understand that why are you different from everything else that they've tried before? And what, what makes you special? What makes your, um, if you will, your product or service special, right? That is the basis of what we're trying to get started on, okay? Because if you don't understand that, you're going to just keep thinking, okay, why is this person uh, doing so much better in terms of sales or copywriting or whatever it might be? Or is this business doing better than mine, right? Like oftentimes you'll see, right? If you see the top 10 businesses in Google or wherever, they might take majority of the leads in that market, right? Let's say there are 1,000 roofing companies. Maybe there are only 10, which might be accounting for 70, 80% of all roofing done on a, on a neighborhood, right? Or in a locality. Because of the fact that they understand the fundamental frameworks of what I'm just teaching you right now, okay? Either through experience, school of hard knocks, whatever. That's what I'm trying to teach right now, okay? Is that cool? All right, so that's the basic idea, okay? So that way, when you, uh, yeah, solution awareness, just choose you to provide it. Why should somebody be able to come get you, right? Why should they come talk to you? Why should they listen to you, right? What's so special about you, right? So that's the basic premise of what we're trying to achieve here, okay? Then let's talk about, let's say you're doing any kind of agency work or commercial, uh, like let's say creating stuff for clients or whatever. The same concept applies also where is that client in the right kind of industry before you even work with them, right? So let's give you, an, let me give you an example, right? There are some industries like fax machines going out of business. Do you want to be in, a, in an industry where they're like selling fax machines right now? <laughs> Not fun, right? You cannot really if you will, convince a new era business to use fax machines and why they're so much better than email or they're better than, let's say, uh, some other modality, correct? Text messages, I don't know, whatever the case might be, right? You can send an email attachment or you want to send a fax, which is better. There are still some medical practices which use fax. I'm not saying no. There's still some older uh, businesses that are doing it, so it's not entirely dead. But as a whole, the industry, if you look at the industry chart, it's probably like this, right? Going down, not going up. So understand that if you're trying to serve a client like that, not the best approach. You could be the greatest salesperson in the world. Not going to help you, right? Uh, the industry is just not conducive for the type of work that you provide, the type of value you provide. Understand this as well, okay? Very important. Because otherwise, what, what you're going to think is this is this miracle where you can magically learn these skills that every industry will help. No, no, no. What you want to do is you want to, climb that rocket ship, so to speak, in that industry, and then you just amplify it through your skill set, right? So that's the other one. Now, one other key point I want to make here is you can study this Pareto principle uh, and also visual case studies and all the other stuff. That's all great. But I kind of want to talk about this Pareto principle, right? It's just the 80-20 rule, okay? So what happens, right? And I wanted to kind of explain this key component to you, okay? Uh, and, and this is something that I wanted to mention. And quite critical for you to understand. So one of the only ways that I've seen for the last so many, so many years is that longevity is one of the biggest reasons why somebody succeeds, okay? What that means is they survive long enough that they got those lucky breaks in between that they became successful, right? It's not that this person was like this, they held this magic wand, right? And then they uh, it, it completely changed the game forever. No, no, no. It's more so like they've been doing the same stuff and their skill set has been so uh, uh, perfected, so to speak, that when their opportunity came, they could just roll in, right? The opportunity as much as possible and take advantage of it. Like I'll give you an example. So um, back in 20, uh, let, let's let's look at it this way, right? In 2014, okay, again, this is an interesting story. I, uh, a friend of mine just told me this and about a month ago, and I was like, so true. But let me give you an example. In 2014, right, this was the year OpenAI was founded, right? So like OpenAI, you know, the creator of ChatGPT and all the other, uh, other stuff. So OpenAI was founded in 2014. At that same time, Google, right, let's say just like Google, they also had their own AI division, right? Like it's called the Deep Mind, okay? Now, from 2014 to all the way, okay, all the way up until 2019, okay, this was five years, okay, they used to run these events, right, 
where the folks from OpenAI, Google, and all these folks just come and say, oh, this is the latest, greatest stuff in AI. Um, and this is the latest, greatest stuff um, that we are working on or researching, right? They used to get in their events, like eight people, <laughs> right? They'll have like a big seminar room and eight people would show up with interest in the subject, right? Just eight people, sometimes 14 people, 12 people, right? And then lo and behold, somewhere around 2022, November, right? Onwards, when Chad GPT was introduced, right? So let's say January of 2023, let's assume. So from 2023, same event, same people, nothing different, nothing changed, right? Same events now will fill up 5,000 people, 10,000 people, 50,000 people. What changed, right? Did the skills of the people change? Not so much. Did the uh, did the people miraculously figure out a new way to reach 5,000 people? Not really, right? They've been doing the same topic. They've been talking about the same subject they were passionate about, interested about, right? What changed is basically the, those people who are, who are working on that same thing since for the last three, four, five years suddenly had their day come into light, right? Where their skills, their actual uh, focus, right? Their passion was now mainstream. And because it became mainstream, effectively now they could say, look, you know, I am a machine learning engineer. I'm an AI engineer or I'm a, I'm a, I'm a researcher, right? And they could literally command everybody's attention, right? People are willing to pay, right? Right now, um, right now, Google, Facebook, Meta, um, let's say OpenAI, Amazon, Microsoft, all these companies are fighting for those limited amount of people. Let's say these are the limited amount of people back in 2015, 2016, 2017 and on. These limited people, right? All these people who are working on this for a while now, four years, five years, three years, some cases, Everybody wants these people now. And these people don't even have to be good marketers, good salespeople in order to derive the biggest opportunities for them, correct? Similarly, in our space, when we talk about AI, when we talk about AI copywriting and stuff like that, today, there'll be a 95% of the people or whatever uh, right now who don't appreciate the fact that with AI, you can write pretty good copy, not world-class. You can tweak it using some fundamentals I'm teaching you right now, but you can do pretty good copy. Now, because of that, what that can do is when it becomes mainstream, where right, every copywriter in the world or every video person in the world is equipped with AI, like back in the day, we had calculators or personal computers, right? Uh, once Excel came in, people are not doing like ledgers and in a, in a sheet of, or in a book, right? Like back in the day, bookkeeping, what did that mean? You were to write uh, accounting stuff in a book, right? Now with Excel, QuickBooks and other stuff, people don't do that anymore. But the same thing doesn't mean that the profession of accounting completely uh, changed. Fundamentals are the same, right? There's just assets, liabilities, there's uh, debit, there's a credit, same stuff, right? So what I'm trying to get at here is that understand that when you're trying to learn the stuff, in the beginning, it will be like, why? Why is nobody else doing it? Why is nobody understanding what I'm doing right now? But once you get it and, and to implement it, it's just a matter of time for when basically everybody will understand, oh, wow, okay, this person now can do this copy in like a day, what used to take maybe a week, two weeks and stuff. Okay, I can, I can see value in speed over, let's say, uh, a brand name doing the work. Let's say, for example, a number one copywriter in the world, let's say, was charging a lot of money and time. Let's say they would take one month or something to do it, right? Somebody else came in and they could do it in a day. There's value to that time, you see? And it'll take time for people to figure that out and it'll become mainstream. So that's the basic idea of how you want to uh, look at it, okay? Now, 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 do we know what caused it to become mainstream was the question. Okay, so it's a good question. So what happens is, right, in generally in terms, right, in, in any technology, in any innovation that occurs, what happens is when your normal everyday people understand, oh, wow, this is interesting, and they start dabbling with it, that's when you know it hit mainstream. Like back in the day when personal computers came in, people were like, uh, computers were only used back then in like universities, right? They had these big mainframe computers where like the whole room was a computer, right? And then when personal computer was introduced, people were like, okay, 
I don't know what to do with this. Like, it sounds cool. Then later on, they're like, oh, you could do word processing. Like you write type in letters. Uh, you could do uh, drawing in it, right? Like with paint and stuff like that, Microsoft Paint or whatever. And people are like, okay, interesting. Now I see the value, right? So that takes some time. So right now, when you talk about uh, the period of principle, what's going to happen in the future, right, is probably those people who are AI equipped, right, who are going to be AI equipped will be the people who will be more in demand than people who don't use AI and who are doing the old way of doing things. That could be the old way of, say, copywriting, the old way of social media marketing or the old way of video creation or the old way of editing stuff, right? And so what, what we want to achieve here is if we understand the fundamentals of it and then we become AI powered copywriter or AI powered video editor or AI powered uh, image, uh, you know, basically uh, social media image editing person or social media publishing or social media marketer. What that's going to do is that it's going to take a time, maybe a, a year or a couple of years or whatever it might be, or maybe sooner, but that skill set will be of such high value that you can command whatever it is that you want because so few people have dedicated some time to master that skill correct that's what we're trying to achieve okay is that cool so that's basically what we're trying to go for that is basically what we are trying to really uh, apply okay cool all right so what did we discover so far okay let's just recap a couple of points and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how we do the script writing process okay cool uh, again, you can use free tools, our tools, doesn't matter. I, I don't even really care what tool you use. Okay. So basically, when you get the time, go watch all this stuff. It's all cool. It all applies to you and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to understand that value you see, right? Like when you look at value, right? Like when you create a video or whatever, the greatest type of videos, the greatest type of copy and the greatest type of marketing pieces or greatest type of content, whether it's even free, is that inherently the video itself should be valuable, okay? Does that make sense? When it is that, when the video itself is valuable, then you don't have to do any marketing, selling or anything because that person has paid attention to finish the actual video that you're creating, okay? That's what we're trying to achieve as well with our script writing. So what that means is, let's look at it this way, right? So right now we are in what, what's known as basically the attention economy, okay? So attention economy. OK, uh, you probably heard about this being spoken before, but I'll just kind of explain this to you in terms of video and video express in particular. What's happening right back in the day, wh what we used to do, and I've, I've done this in the past as well, where back in the day when you used to send, let's say, email, uh, like uh, direct mail, right? Like let's say send a letter or a postcard, right? So let's say like you have a postcard, uh, like this is this is a postcard right here. Somebody sent a postcard, right? Uh, one of the things you wanted to do is not have somebody throw it away, right? Like somebody held a postcard like this, you, you didn't want to throw it away because right? the minute you threw it in the recycle bin or garbage or whatever, that money that they spent was for nothing, right? On the other hand, if you actually paid attention, you're like, oh, interesting, I like this, I'll, I'll go read this postcard, it sounds good or whatever, it might be a piece of marketing, right? And you're like, okay, I'm going to read this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up, I'm going to read it or whatever, right? What would happen is that the likelihood of you making a commitment thereafter, because you made that small commitment, right, of not throwing it away, actually paying attention. And basically that allowed that person to make the sale happen, right? Because it facilitated the first step, which was not throwing like everything else. You stood out. Now people are reading, right? So they used to do it this way, okay, back in the day, talking in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, right? Uh, early 90s. So what they used to do is like, if they, it was a travel agency, right? We had tourism as a market, right? Somebody posted, if you're a travel agency, what you would do is you would write something like, okay, eight things to pack with you on a vacation, right? Instead of saying, oh, our travel agency is going to give you the best deals and cruises and in and, and airlines and stuff. They're like, okay, eight ways that eight things you should never forget to pack when going on a vacation, right? Now you're like, okay, what are those eight things? So I got to read this, right? And then you read it, and then now people paid attention. They were more likely to read other stuff, right? So what they did is a marketing piece itself was valuable. Does that make sense? So there was value inherently in the marketing piece itself. And then you would not throw it away. Now it's the next step. It will be better in terms of getting that person to make a sale. So in the real estate industry, a lot of real estate agents, what they will do is they'll say, look, what, how much is your house worth? We will, we will uh, 
give you your houses uh, worth right now and comparables in the market will give you your houses worth. Sounds interesting, right? Why not? Or they might say, okay, uh, in your neighborhood, these were the homes that sold um, and this is how much they sold for. So that way you can make your own inference like, okay, this house in my neighborhood was worth this much or this apartment in my building was worth this much or whatever, right? So you can basically, there's some value in it than saying I'm the best real estate agent in the world. Oh, I'm so great. Uh, why should you pay attention to me? See that? See what I'm saying? So similarly, when we went into email right thereafter from direct mail, we moved to email, let's say. What we used to do is we used to send valuable content via email. Hey, you know, this is a newsletter. These are eight tips for you to do whatever, right? Like let's say uh, grow a business or get more leads or whatever, right? So now when people are opening the email, there's value inherently in the email itself, right? So that's the other one, right? There's inherent value in the email itself. So people will pay attention to it. Similarly, what, what happens is when you're trying to basically, you know, if you go into the other stage now, we're into video now, we moved away from uh, email, let's say we're now in visual communication. Similarly, what you want to do is right now, before back in the day, like let's say not even back in the day, I'm talking a few years ago, right? Five years ago, seven years ago, whatever. You'd create a video, people would uh, laugh watching it or interact watching it. They, they felt good about themselves watching it. That was good enough. You know what I mean? Now though, the video has to captivate attention, okay? People, they don't have much of an attention span. What is it? Seven, eight seconds, right? Uh, so the point is, if somebody can stick around your video more than six or seven seconds, you've already won, okay? That's all it really is these days. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, that's the fact. So when I'm looking at script writing, that's the key thing that we want to approach is what can we do in the first, right, eight seconds of our video, right? Eight seconds of the video, what can we add? What can we put that which will actually get people to keep watching throughout the process, okay? This could be something of true value to them. That could be, let's say, for example, in the case of perfumes, right? Let's say I want to show what's the really, really cool things of that perfume. Let's say, for example, if it's a, a travel or tourism company, I want to talk about, let's say, something interesting that was recent, relevant, right, for them. Like maybe there's a special discount happening uh, because, let's say, people are not traveling to this area as much as they used to, or this new area is so brand new that not many people know about this hotel or this city or this area, right? And they maybe built a new amusement park there that nobody knows about. So now people are like, oh, okay, wow, I didn't know about this before. It triggers in their head, wow, okay, this is new, this is exciting, it's brand new, I'm gonna watch more. Does that make sense? So these are the components that we have to keep in mind. Okay, is that clear so far? Let me know in the chat box if it's clear. Then I'll talk about now the script writing part. And then what I'm gonna do is the next training session, so as not to make this too big of a video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cover end to end. Okay, so first part, we started with the script. Then I'm gonna show you how to do the voiceover and then put uh, like the, the whole, if you will, this sequence together, okay? That way we have a professional looking video coming together, okay? All right, okay, cool, it's clear, right? Hope, hope that everything is clear so far. All right, all right, so uh, great, great, excellent. All right, so let me just kind of summarize so far because so I want to drill home these points, right? So what do we discuss? So um, uh, let's see here. So what do we discuss right now? So again, for those who are not uh, <laughs> here or whatever, what do we discuss? All right. So first of all, what did we discuss? First of all, we discussed about having a script already set up in the back of your mind. Even if you're working on client's project, that's the first thing they're going to give you. They're going to give you the script. Um, and if you can do the script as well for them, you can charge more money, obviously, because the copywriting aspect of it is critical there, right? So anyway, first thing we want to do is we're going to come up with the script, which I'm going to teach you right now next. Uh, what are some components and how do we do it with AI and all that? Anyway, the second thing we want to do beyond the script is understand the marketing itself should be valuable and derive attention. So meaning they should feel like watching this video was fun, enlightening, got them some new information they did not know about before. Or uh, like when they're watching they're like, oh, interesting, I, I it just uh, put like a light bulb in my head kind of thing, right? So that means that the video itself should convey value, meaning they watched it, they should feel, oh, okay, interesting. I didn't know about this before. Oh, wow, that's cool. That's interesting. I didn't think about this before. That sort of feeling, right? Should elicit that feeling because people buy because of emotion and justify it with logic. It's a fact. Most of you already know this stuff, right? Anyway, so now the third thing 
is we don't have to worry about scarcity and all that kind of stuff. You want to go after the market itself. Okay. So the market itself has to be a growing market. A market itself should be one where uh, there is some uh, like a lot of interest. There is a lot of people interested in that topic or uh, whatever they're trying to do, right? It's like if you basically go into a market that is the declining market, like fax machines and stuff like that, even if you're amazing at what you do, even if you apply everything to the T to what I explain, you may not be able to fight against the uh, wave, so to speak, right? Why do you want to struggle going uphill when you can better off going downhill kind of thing, right? And similarly, okay, the fourth thing that we wanted to also that, that I mentioned here, right? In any market, whether you like it or not, right? In any market out there, the top 10% of the people end up getting all or 10 to 20% of the of the market and end up taking majority of the sales, majority of the exposure, majority of the atten attention, majority of everything. Like if you look at podcast too right now, right? Probably the top 100 podcasters right now probably get almost all the viewership, maybe 90% or something of the viewership right now, right? Is that fair? Well, that's how the world works, right? So similarly, the same thing will be like, as you understand, it, it is much more, if you will, better to be positioned to be in the top 10% than it is trying to uh, see, okay, I'm going to be just underneath that. I'm going to do average. I'm okay if I just do the bare minimum and, and, and be good enough. No, it doesn't work that way, right? Like when you're in that position, it'll be better. And like I mentioned, if you want to be in that position, you want to have a skill set, like what I was trying to explain to you, right? Uh, this, this part, and I'm going to answer some questions on this as well uh, on here, is that the people with AI skills will be the future. People who understand how to write prompts, people who understand how to basically uh, use AI to write scripts, people who are uh, basically able to leverage AI to speed up their workflows, right? Those are the type of people who will we'll end up actually being more in demand in the future than it is somebody who's just doing the old way of doing things. Because at the end of the day, the old way of doing things is much slower and more inefficient if you think about it, right? No matter what people will say. Some people don't like to hear that, but it's a fact, right? Now, similarly, the last thing I mentioned to you there was, if you remember, when we talk about, if you will, a market, and we talk about script writing and stuff like that, we want to understand the attention aspect of it these days, okay? Whether we like it or not, uh, we are in the attention economy, right? Attention, so that's the other part. If you can grab people's attention, Everything becomes easy thereafter, okay? So these are the key components. So now let's talk about how do we incorporate these elements into our script writing process such that when we are actually creating the script, we make sure whatever the market is that we are going after, we can basically do this process. Now, what I'm saying is probably just 10% of what all the things you can do. I'm just trying to tell you in a limited amount of time that we have together, instead of focusing on it for 10 hours, because there's so many ways to do it because we're reaching about seven, 8 billion people in this world, right? Whatever the population is, right? And people with disposable income or whatever it might be in any industry, there's tons of them, right? So the point I'm making is like, say for attention, right? You can grab attention of somebody through storytelling, right? You can create stories, which you can do story videos. That grabs attention for somebody, right? You could grab attention by using things like this fast cut um, feature where you do cuts like every two seconds or whatever, you're constantly changing the uh, effects of the video. So people are like, oh, whoa, what's this new thing? What's this new thing? That's what Mr. Beast and some of these other top YouTubers, that's what they do, right? Because it grabs attention. They understood that. Uh, people don't want something stagnant. People want something moving constantly, right? And changing. All right. So that's the other one. You can grab attention through that. Now, the other way to grab attention, that's what I'm saying. There's so many ways to do it, but understand that attention is important, right? If you don't do that, then it's all for nothing, right? All right. So that is the key concepts here, okay? So you want to do storytelling, you can do that. You want to grab attention through fast cuts. You want to do attention, let's say, for example, even there's better ways to do it too, like where the subject is very interesting, or maybe controversial, or maybe uh, something to the effect of like, it it has some people who believe it, don't believe it, some people who don't agree with it or whatever. That's also interesting for a lot of people, right? So there is interest, 
right? In that subject matter, like enough people are interested in it, right? It's relevant is the other one, right? So you can do all this stuff. Like meaning you, if you talk about Elvis today, right? What he was doing or whatever, not many people may know or find relevancy in that. But if you talk about something that just happened last week or yesterday or today, this morning or whatever, it's a lot more relevant and there's a lot more interest to that, correct? So that's what we wanted to achieve, okay? Does that make sense? So now, now that it is clear, Okay, and um, and let me go to the next part, but I'm going to answer a couple of questions and then go to the next part. Okay, and then I'll basically answer some more questions and then we should be good to go. All right. So uh, actually, let me bring this back. All right. So, yeah, this is a good question. Okay, the people with AI skills will be in demand, but when the fact they're using uh, AI um, will be cutting the amount of time needed to create those services mean charges will decrease. Um, and then the answer when Dan was mentioning, the, it's more value and speed of execution, so you can even charge more, not less. Fair point, right? Uh, so, yeah, just that's the key thing, right? If you think about it, the world moves on speed, right? Let's say, for example, back in the day when Amazon came in, before Amazon came into the forefront with the prime shipping and all stuff, um, people used to wait seven days, 14 days sometimes, 10 days for shipping, right? Amazon comes in and they have like prime two day shipping. Then they said one day shipping. And in some areas now it's a few hours shipping, right? Now think about it, right? Did they, what did that do? Did that basically lower the value of shipping or increase the value of shipping? It increased it, correct? So because now people value faster shipping. Let's say for example, if somebody said, I'll ship it to you in six hours, I'll charge you more for it. There are companies will pay a premium for that compared to say somebody saying one week I'll ship, right? Similar concept when it comes to projects and real life scenarios where a lot of times, right? People hire people because of urgency. They need something done quickly. They need some solution to a problem they're facing quickly, right? And so if you can speed up that, that workflow and speed up that, yes, you can definitely charge more for it. And more important than that, Think of it this way. You can reach more people, right? You can serve more people. You can help more people. That's also another key component, right? Before you can basically be able to only do one project at a time. Maybe you can do multiple projects at a time. That is also beneficial for you too, right? At the end of the day. Okay. Now, the other thing, okay, is, uh, uh, and, and this is the other thing I wanted to mention here, okay, is that when Amazon introduced the prime um, shipping, right? Just think of it this way, right? Shipping itself became fast shipping or e-commerce itself benefited from it. Does that make sense? Like, let's say, for example, before Amazon came in with like the fast shipping, people were like, oh, you know, I'll go to the local Home Depot or local Best Buy or local whatever, Walmart or whatever, and I'm going to go buy it, right? Coles or whatever you have, right? And they'll be like, why should I wait for seven days for something or 10 days for something when I could just go local to the local store and go get it right and that was the thought process for everybody always then suddenly amazon comes up with this fast uh, shipping people are like oh wow this e-commerce thing ain't that bad right i'm, I'm gonna try uh just to maybe order more stuff on the internet right so that basically improved so like if you look at the e-commerce market from when amazon introduced it let's assume it was something like this right like it was going up slightly the minute Amazon introduced the free shipping, it's like rocket ship and like this, right? What changed? The market increased here. So that's what I'm trying to say. So same thing applies with AI as well. More people might hire copywriters. More people will hire uh, video editors now. People who are reluctant to basically, uh, let's say, create marketing campaigns for them on social media and stuff. More people will do it now, right? It becomes more mainstream in that sense because now they, they, they uh, let's say, a normal everyday business, which has four or five employees, let's say, right? They had to hire another social media manager. It was not worth it for them. But with AI, they could train somebody to do it for them much faster. They could hire somebody else uh, to do it, let's say, to pay a little bit of money every month and have somebody manage it. It's more doable now. So it opens up the entire market itself. It makes the market bigger. Does that make sense? And that's how efficiency works, right? Like if you look at history, before the cars were invented, People used to ride horses and the problem with horses, they would stop suddenly, right? And then uh, after that, you had uh, motorcycles and you had uh, bicycles, right? And then the problem with bicycles is you can't ride a bicycle in the snow or you couldn't ride a bicycle when it was raining or super heavy, right? And 
then a car was introduced. More people bought a car because it solved majority of the people's problems than people looking at bicycles alone, right? Um, because bicycles was a smaller market, cars was a huge market. It increased the amount of people who would tra travel. And more people travel means more money for vacations, hotels, uh, any kind of uh, uh, industry that relies on tourism slash it added mobility, right? So meaning more deals could be done worldwide or in different localities. People were only doing uh, buying cheese, uh, milk or butter or whatever it might be from their local area. Now they could move to another city or they could travel to another area and buy something for cheaper. So it just made the market bigger, right? And that's how you have to look at it. Same concept, okay? Hope that is clear. I, I mean, I don't want to preach too much, but it's just a simple concept, right? And uh, and that's the basic idea as well, okay? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you see this Amazon uh, change from red to the blue ocean business model. Absolutely. It, they removed the friction, right? That's the key point, right? Now, the other thing is basically understand that the major thing that we are aiming for is that with speed also comes flexibility. Does that make sense? Like if something doesn't work, much faster to change it and try something new. Does that make sense? So like before, uh, let's say it was taking for us too, personally, right? Like I'll give you an example for me, right? That's why I kind of wanted to create Video Express back then uh, where we do AI video. What was happening was I used to, uh, I used to have video uh, animators and video editors and stuff in our uh, team. Some of them were so busy, we used to hire uh, contractors and so some people we used to put full time just for working on clients projects, our projects. And there was always a situation where uh, we'd have to hire somebody, pay them, let's say $2,000 or something for one video, let's say a minute, two minutes, three minutes long, whatever it was. Not only that, we they'd say, okay, look, it's gonna take me 10 days to provide that back to you, right? And then on top of that, if there's any revisions and stuff, it would might might even take like 18 days, let's say, right? Uh, overall, all said and done, like almost 20 days, 21 is three weeks or so, right? For something to be out there. Now, I don't even have to pay this much money. That's one thing. But more important than the money itself, I could do three campaigns or four campaigns or 10 campaigns I could try for the same amount of time, right? That means if somebody comes in and says, look, you know, I'll try I'll try this out. If it doesn't work, if people don't, uh, it you know, it doesn't captivate people's attention or it doesn't end up doing the job it needs to do. What we then do, very simple, try to the next one. You do another one. You see my point? That means it saves time to also test different things. Like if you look at social media marketing, you look at, uh, let's say, any kind of work, like YouTube videos or whatever, the main reason why people give up, you know it, right? They cannot consistently do it long enough, right? Like, Everybody knows that getting traffic with social media, with YouTube and Facebook and all this other stuff is powerful. It's valuable. But tell them post every day for the next 365 days or 700 days. They give up in day number 20, right? Because consistency is so difficult. Something comes up in life. The same thing applies here. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat box right now because then I'm going to talk about uh, the next part of it and then take some more questions and then we'll talk about the next training session coming up as well because this one the script writing part I wanted to drive home this point because it's very very important you understand this all right all right I'm seeing a lot of questions a lot of points here great 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 all right all right all right excellent all right so let me see here excellent all right great makes sense right all right now let's talk about this right now okay so what about the script writing process, okay? So coming back to this point, let's talk about this again that I try to mention here real quick. So how do we do the script writing process for videos like this one, right? So there are two tools you can use. There's so many tools, by the way. You can use any tools, but like um, two tools that you can use. One is you can use ChatGPT. I'll show you how to use ChatGPT because it's free. You can use a free version of it. You don't have to pay that 20 bucks. So one is a ChatGPT and two, is our text writer, right? Which is part of that human talk, human talk application. So uh, most of you probably have it. If not, no worries. You can use either or, but I want, I'm going to show you how to use this as well. So both options work. You can use our text writer app. You can use even chat GPT. doesn't matter. Um, with chat GPT, since it's free, I guess you could use that because again, like I said, our goal is not to, um, you know, focus on hundred different things. We want to focus on creating videos properly. Right? So in chat GPT, if you have the free version, uh, you can go and get it with OpenAI. 
you can do the same process. So here's how you do it, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through this step-by-step step right now. And if you have any questions, of course, you can um, ask me throughout the, every step of the process, okay? All right, so in ChatGPT, I have it open right now, okay? All you have to do, okay, is you say, you see what I did here. Create a 30 second TikTok style video script for my perfume brand, which includes a female model, showcasing it with a voiceover narration. You are to write a storytelling style narrative script for the voiceover, right? So you see this right here. What it did is Chad GPT. And again, you can use, uh, I use just GPT 3.5 to do the same process, right? GPT 3.5 is free. Any one of you can use the Chad GPT free app and do the same process. When you write that down, it creates the entire script for you, okay? So again, very straightforward, okay? And uh, nothing really fancy here, right? And nothing really, you know, uh, really tricky or whatever. You open it up, go back here. Like this is a blank screen, right? You just go in, you paste it. You put 3.5, which is free. And you want if you can try it. And that's it, right? Create a 30 second TikTok style. So this is this this is what I'm trying to get at, right? 30 second, we can say one minute, doesn't matter. And then click on this. Now it says, you see this right here, right? When it says voiceover, right? You see this? This is the voiceover that which we want to create. So there's two ways to do it, okay? And why we do this also matters, okay? So I'll explain to you right now. So again, in the end-to-end -end video later on, I'll show you exactly how this end-to-end -end will work step-by-step, -step, but I want you to understand the fundamentals of why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? So what you could do is you can open up a notepad or whatever you want. This is easy stuff. Uh, let me show you one sec. Here we go. Actually, I have too many notepads here open. All right, cool. Anyways, there we go. There we go. So we have here. All right, so what we do is very simple, okay? This is the thing you have to do. You just paste this voiceover stuff as is, okay? That's it, right? You paste this stuff here, brand name perfume, which is awesome perfume or whatever, whatever, right? Um, and then you just go in, enter, and then you go into the next step and next step, next step. You paste all these together in one line and then watch this, okay? So you create the script together. That's all I'm really doing. I'm just copying and pasting these elements. You, if you want to, you can even say, um, when you're writing the script itself, right? Um, just say like, write me a script without any quotes in a paragraph format. That's it, right? Now it's gonna do, you see this? That's it. You can do it this way as well, up to you. There's different ways to do it. The way I do the other way is so that it helps me create the scenes, right? Which I'll get to right now. So this would be the script, right? Uh, you can modify it, do whatever. In this particular case, what I do, right? In this particular case, what I do is I just copy and paste the script. Does that make sense? Let me know in the chat box, does that make sense? So what we're achieving, what we're trying to do is effectively, uh, we are trying to basically do this exact same process step by step, okay? Now, the, the idea is that when you get the script, you can modify it keeping some of the components that I mentioned to you earlier, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, you basically keep some of the components you have throughout the process and basically reuse them. So in this particular case, let me show you. Um, I have this right here in ChatGPT, let's say. Right click, copy this script. You can make some changes. I go in here, import media. I go into text to speech. You give it a voice. Let's say, for example, uh, let's see, I don't know, whoever you like, Deanna. Let's say I'd slightly, sometimes I might put like 1.1 speed to make it better. I paste it here. Let me just remove the spaces here. And then what I will do is just put the brand name here, right? Luxury brand name would be, I don't know, ABC perfumes or whatever. And um, let's say, for example, same thing here, ABC perfume. And then that concludes this process. You can take it as is, 30 second, one minute or whatever, okay? That's what we do with the ChatGPT system. Simple, create a script, like so, boom, done. Free version of ChatGPT does it. You, you create it, you paste it. And then when you click import speech, it takes you a few seconds. And then what it will do is it'll generate the speech for us. Uh, it's ready to go here. You can download it if you want for later use, but what will happen is it will get saved in your media library, right? 
uh, generally it will get saved in your uh, media library and you can then reuse it from there, right? So here, this is where it is. It usually gets saved in my media and then the audio folder, you see this? Because we wanna separate the audio from the uh, video, right? That's why we do that. Um, so I go here, audio, so this is the audio here. You see this? Um, it's about 37 seconds long uh, in a sun drenched garden, blah, 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 right? And then you can drag and drop into the timeline like so, and then you can build your scenes that way. Now, the second part, right? And And this is important, the second part of it, okay? is you can create the scenes for it, okay? So how we do it, again, I'll show you how to do the chat GPT. You can use it within our text writer as well. I'll show you this right now, um, like just real quick right here. Okay, in chat GPT, what you could do is you can come back here and then you can say, now uh, write me this script in the style of scenes with the character performing actions in each scene, right? See, I'm still using GPT 3.5, which is the free version of ChatGPT, right? Um, and explain each scene in the style of a prompt, right? Simple. So um, I'm going to give you a PDF doc after this training is done on exactly what I'm pasting here. Nothing really fancy, really. All I'm saying is write me the script in the style of scenes with the character performing actions in each scene and explain each scene in the style of a prompt, right? Okay, okay, so you see this right here. Um, open with a lush garden, bathed in sunlight, flowers sway gently in the breeze, a female model enters, excluding uh, elegance and confidence or whatever, right? That's scene number one, right? So what you could do um, is simple, just copy this thing right here, right? And basically you go into AI uh, videos, image, uh, create from prompt, okay, like so. And then here you would want to decide which one you want, photorealistic, you want human here or whatever. Uh, I'll put human and then I could put vintage cinema, photorealistic, doesn't really matter. I mean, realistically, it doesn't. But you can try different ones. And I'll try and paste this with that particular setup done. Does that make sense? So then here, then you can add the negative prompts and positive prompts and all this other stuff. And then you can do the image preview like so. And then you can start with this in mind. Does that make sense? There we go. See this? This is how we created the first frame here of this girl right here, as you can see. And then now you can reuse her for other scenes. So let's say, for example, I get this scene right here. This one is scene is created. All I gotta do is I just click create video here if I want, Then I, uh, and I can set the motion speed high, low, whatever, it doesn't really matter really. And then I click create video. While this is being created, the video, by the way, let's go to the second scene right now. Let's open that up. Second scene is the model delicately picks up the perfume bottle, takes with blah, 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 right? Whatever. So let's just click reuse same character, right? And then what you could do, and by the way, since this, this character is forward facing like this, you can even select video as forward facing to improve her facial expressions and stuff. Because when a lot of movement is happening in the frame, sometimes uh, there might be some pixelation in the face. So we can select this uh, to improve it for humans in particular. Uh, that's what it works really well with. So yeah, I'll select that too. Anyway. So then I will paste that other one. So let's just copy paste that what I just selected. The model delicately picks up. I use the, reuse the same character and then generate image preview. And then now it's going to generate. If you don't like anything, you can keep changing. Obviously, there's nothing really stopping you from changing the prompts or whatever it might be. Uh, and you can focus on that other aspects of it. Okay. So that's basically how we structure this whole setup, okay? Step number one, like if we go back here, right? Let's let's go back here. This is scene number one, right? Oops, let me open that up. Uh, let me see here, where did that go? All right, so if you see there, every scene is a different uh, approach here. Does that make sense? Okay, there we go, so here. You see, that's scene number two. This is scene number three, right? So basically how we're doing it. Now, if you don't like this, what you could do is you can even tell her, or tell her, tell ChatGPT, write this in the style of image prompts, right? Um, uh, with commas, let's say, right? There we go. A vibrant garden, blah, blah, blah. You see this? So you can do this too. So each scene is created in the style of a prompt. And then it basically allows you to create those first frames. Does that make sense? 
So this is how we are doing it. And of course, in the next training, I'm going to go in depth on this topic on exactly how to do it. But is, does that does that make sense so far? So because we are doing scene one, scene two, scene three, each of them maybe three to seven seconds long or so, we want to make sure that each scene captivates that story that we are trying to do. And because we can reuse the character, the environment, and all this other stuff, we can do the same concept every step of the way. Okay. So that is basically the workflow. And I'll give you some other uh, ideas on how to achieve this and all that good stuff. But does that making sense? Let me know in the chat box right now. I hope that is clear. All right. Excellent. That's making sense for all of you. All right. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to show you right now is that when you log in, again, I'm going to show you this uh, in our application real quick. Okay. When you log into application, a lot of you folks are seeing a blank screen like this all the time, right? And this is where you get confused and uh, you don't know what to do next, right? So that's what we solve. And this is ChatGPT free version. We'll solve it. We can also use our text writer application, which also does the same thing. Uh, but regardless, what you do, the idea is that you create them into scenes and then the scenes will become their own prompts, right? So let's, 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 let me show you this again. Okay. Uh, by the way. So again, this also, by the way, I just forgot, um, this also works with a public gallery. So let's say, for example, um, you liked something here, right? So I don't know. Let me see here. You like the style, right? Let's say you like the particular style, right? Uh, like you like this one right here, right? So this one right here, you like this one right here, um, or you like this one right here. If you wanted to replicate these styles, you can do that too. So for example, you click on this, right? Or you wanted to click on this, you want to do this either. It doesn't matter. What you would want to do is you would want to reuse this, click on redesign, and then you can reuse this element as the perfume brand as well if you want to. Does that make sense? So for example, Let's open up. Um, let's open up here real quick. Chat GPT. Okay, so here, right? You see this? A vibrant garden enters. Blah blah blah. Right. Um, and let's copy this. And then here, you can always add the point here. You see this? You add the main points here. Put a comma, and now you put it in this environment. Right? I don't know how it'll come. Let's see. I mean, interesting for me too as well. Right. Anyway, so let's look on image preview. So now the point is now I'm creating it in that environment from the gallery. You see this right here. You see now it creates that whole environment. So if I want to and I wanted to recreate that environment, I can do that. Does that make sense? So I can then go to the other um, prompt. Let's go here. I can do the same thing. OK, uh, like let's put some random one here. I don't even know. Uh, let's just look at that one right here. And then uh, this, let's say, basically, um, Oh, let me see here. All right. So confident uh, female model enters, whatever. Let's just click on this right here. This was what I pasted. Again, I right click and paste this. And now I could basically um, recreate the same thing, reuse the same character if I want to. Doesn't really matter. If I want to, don't want to, doesn't really matter. And then you can click generate preview. So the idea is, that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that every step of the way, this process, okay, you see this right here? No face was detected in the source image. That's why you see this right here, there was no face, right? So when I say reuse the same character, there's no face to utilize it. So you'd wanna remove that. And then what you would do is just reuse the elements of it, right? So which you can do through the prompts itself. So now you click on this, okay, boom. Now what you can do is that it will create the environment again. There we go, see this? Now, because we can see the face, we can reuse the same character because she has a face now, right? See this. So that's the basic idea. So what we're trying to do is we create the scenes first, create the text, like basically text to speech voice or whatever, then the scenes and then the videos. Okay. That way what happens, right, is very simple, right? You get the whole workflow, right? And the workflow will then um, basically do all the work, if you will, right? So same concept. So I'll actually open up uh, what I did the elegant perfume one, right? So like, let's go here. I'll show you what I did exactly. So what I did is write me a story uh, for a perfume brand. And then it said visual, voiceover, blah, blah, blah. Then I just said, write me in script format, did the whole thing, right? Same concept, right? So the idea is that you can do the same thing. Now let's talk about something like a travel agency, right? Let's say you want to create a video for a travel agency. You have no clue. So same concept again. Okay, and after this one, I'll give you the PDF for what I'm doing with ChatGPT. 
but same concept, right? So uh, you can go to chat GPT and basically do the same process again. So let me just do that again. Let's create a new one, chat GPT 3.5. It's free for everybody. You can just say, write me a 45 second TikTok uh, and YouTube short script for a travel agency specializing in trips to uh, sunny beach locations, that's it, right? Um, and then we say write it in the form of a voiceover script in paragraph format, okay? That's it. There we go. And it'll start doing this. Now, if you don't like this, or you wanna change this, let's say, for example, uh, you don't like it, then we can say write it in the style of Mr. Beast or something. There we go. There we go. Hey, what's up, beach lovers? It's your boy, Mr. Beast. You see the point, right? And tweak it based on whatever you want to do. Um, but the idea is that if if you want to this, this part, and then I can obviously throw some emojis, I can delete those emojis or whatever. The point is that if if you have this, right click and copy this, go back into import media. And go back into text to speech. Pick your voice over which one you like, like Awa, Iwa. I don't know. Doesn't matter. All of them are uh, all these new ones are pretty good. And then you can paste it. Just make sure you remove these smiley ones because the text to speech will not understand those. Um, or you can even sell ChatGPT to remove it. The free version doesn't really matter. And then now I can make some changes or whatever, and then uh, generate the speech. Right. Sim uh, and while this is being generated, like there we go, we generated the speech. While this is being generated, like so it's done and it's saved into the audio folder. It's 44 seconds, right? So what we want to do now is we go back and then say, uh, write, um, we'll just copy paste the same thing and then write this in the form of scenes with each scene and showing a specific um specific action right and write it in the form of a image prompt or something right and then then just paste that thing and i'm going to just remove this uh this hashtags and stuff right and then boom there you go there you go you see this image a panoramic view of the pristine beach with palm trees swaying gently in the breeze blah 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 right and this is this this is the voiceover that's matching it see what's happening voiceover is matching that scene so you can sync it such that it will sync to that whatever is being spoken so if i go back you see this here right let me highlight this actually you can see clearly that means if you, in other words are you ready to escape the everyday grind and bask in the warmth of the sun up until here is scene number one so that's your that's your first video right ai video part that will be the first scene then the second scene will be the next one, next one, next one, right? You get my point. That's how you sync them in the timeline here, in this timeline section, correct? I'll show you this in detail uh, in the next training, but I want to give you the foundations of what you want to look for, right? And uh, you want to give some value propositions for the audience and stuff. Anyway, so what I would do then is I go back to the images, all right? Go back here, right? And basically, like, this is the scenes that are being added. So I go back to AI uh, cr uh, create from prompt. Let's say, for example, I want to create photorealistic and I want to add this in. And then I want to add, let's say, highly detailed, surreal, whatever. It doesn't matter. You want to do cinematic, do cinematic. But just this is how you degenerate that scene. Scene number one is generated through this element like so. There we go. We have the beach. That's our beach scene, right? So then what you could do is then you can create the video on this. So I just go and click on create video here. And that'll become one scene, right? So click create, and then it does its thing in the background. Let's go to the next one here, okay? What does it say next? I don't know, okay, a luxurious blah, 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 right? Um, and then let's just see here, and then there you go. Okay, I can remove the quotes as well, by the way, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's just a sign that reads whatever. Uh, and then you just put like something like this. People are seen lounging in the pool, just so it's simple. And then click on generate image. It'll do its thing. So this is scene number two. Then we go back while this is being generated. Okay, this is generated right now. Let's go back. Let's just click create video for this one too. Boom. While it's doing its thing, let's go back here to the, again, let's go here. Collage of stunning beach locations, blah, 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 right? There we go. Right click, copy. 
then right click. You can keep changing the scene styling as well. I'm just going to keep it cinematic to keep it consistent. But then you click create. This is the third scene. Okay. Imagine in the timeline. All right. There we go. We have a collage here created. If you want, create a video from this collage as well. There we go. While it's doing this, let's go back here. Um, and then let's go back to the next scene, which is a travel agent sitting in the desk or blah, blah, blah. And then there we go. Right click paste. And then we created this other scene as well. So click generate and boom. So the idea is that you're creating these scenes and creating the videos in the timeline. Like, so you see this right here, click create. And then what happens is after this is done. So let's just show, let, let me just show you. you go to the media library, you go show me here. And then here is where you would add. So let's say you add, you drag and drop it scene number one, like so. And that's scene number one, right? So uh, if you go back in here, um, there'll be in my AI videos, scene number two is here, you see this? So now what I'm doing is I'm matching the audio, right? What was the audio again? Let's just, let me just show you. The audio was this one right here. Are you ready for an escape type of thing, right? So this is what I'm doing. So there, therefore, so like if you play this, there we go. You see that? That is how basically we're doing it. Does that make sense? So basically this is the approach, okay? And, uh, Basically, that's how you're gonna you're gonna create the whole timeline. It's gonna take you maybe five minutes to ten minutes of the whole to fill this up, and then you can now generate. When you create generate, when you export the video like so, and then you can basically export the entire video, basically, right? So uh, basically, when when you export it, you can export it in 1080p and before whatever. Click create, then it's gonna come up in your my videos like so. Then you can add captions, subtitles, and stuff like that using the automatic captions option right here, and it's ready to do whatever you want. And here's the best part though, okay? While this is being created, I wanna show you one other thing here that you could do. So as you know, all of these are being added in here, right? Like so into these timeline areas here, like so. Now what you want to do, and this is important, is that just understand that later on, if you don't like anything, you can delete it. Like you didn't like this one, let's say you didn't like it, just delete this from your timeline like so. Go back to AI videos and generate something else more better. Let's say, for example, the travel agent made more sense being 3D and then um, uh, like this 3D model, like let's say, for example, right? You go back here, right? And then you can go in here and then you can just paste this prompt like so. And then now you can have like a 3D uh, style. You see what I'm saying? So you can always go back and change things and play around with it because you have an entire timeline. Look, you see it right here, right? And in this case, if it's multiple people, you can just say multiple, just remove multiple people here. There's just quick, uh, we don't want two people. Let's say we don't want two traveling, we only want one, right? You can then play around with it like so. And then now you can basically, uh, basically get the output that you want, right? Let's say duplicate, double, you can play around with it. You get my point. Or you can even change the actual idea here to cinematic, let's say in 3D. And then it'll have that output, that output that you desire, for example, right? You see my point, okay, there we go. So I click on, uh, then you can generate the video for this one too. It'll do its thing, creates the timeline basically, okay? So that's the basic idea. You got the point, right? So you can generate as many of those previews, obviously, as you wish, and then you can keep playing around with it. And then after you've done the video, right, you can play around with the stuff, like in painting, you can eliminate something. Let's say, for example, in in painting, you want to remove this stuff right here, this glass. You can do it, just put something else. Let's say you want to put a flower pot or something. I'm just making up, but you get the point. Or you can use object removal to completely eliminate that if you wish, right? You can go to object removal, you can go to select, it'll show in your videos. And then now you can come into play. You choose this one right here. Let's say you wanted to remove this element right here. Okay, you selected that. And then basically you can create the video. And then now that object is removed and then a new video gets created. Does that make sense? Or if you didn't like this image, you can go back to change image and select another image. Does that make sense? I'm just selecting this one object and I'll remove it in object removal. And now it's going to get removed completely from this scene. Does that make sense? So all these other tools will come into play after you've created the video itself, right? So that's the basic idea. So all of these are there to, okay, I didn't like this. I want to remove it, can remove it. Okay, I didn't like this. I want to put something else in there. Then the in-painting thing comes into play. You get the point, right? So that's the idea here. So uh, when you go in here, uh, you see that the travel agent video is being done now. It's finished. So you can use that one, this cartoon one. 
uh, if you wish this one right here, because the other one I didn't like maybe. So you can play around with this stuff. And then while you were doing that, the object removal one was being done, it's being generated behind the scenes, that'll be finished, right? That's the basic idea, right? So uh, that's the basic idea. Yeah, does that make sense? Let me know, let me know so that uh, I'm seeing this um, uh, here. Now, this is a good question. Is your audio always on top? Not necessarily, okay? So, so how you can do this, so imagine this, right? Um, okay, by the way, while I was doing this, you see this, uh, you can just uh, show, um, let me go back here actually. So it's it's done here, that object removal one, you see this, it removed that uh, completely. You see this, it was removed there, right? So again, that's the basic idea. So you can play around with stuff. Uh, even the in-painting will do the same thing, but it might add some things, but it's not 100% accurate depending on the situation, okay? Anyway. So the idea is, look, look, uh, look at this, this example I'm going to show you. So the question was like, do I always have to have it in top? Depends if you have a background music score. So if you're going to have a background music score, so I understand this. Think of it like layers on top of each other, right? So if you're going to have a background music score, let's just add a topic to the top. If you're going to have a background music score, you're going to have, let's say you're going to create one below. I'll show you. So here, this is the voiceover, right? And you want background music to be underneath that. So you'd go to media library again. Let's say, um, let's see here, audio, right? So let's say, for example, I have some background music, right? I'll put it here in the third layer and then right click, go to properties. And I'm going to reduce the volume of it because I don't want the audio to be too much, too overbearing, right? So yeah, that's where it happens. If you only have one audio, it doesn't matter. You put it all on top, bottom, doesn't matter. Right. Similarly, if I let me just delete this real, real quick, I'll show you. Similarly, if you want to add any text effects, right? So let's say you go to text animations here. Um, let me show you here. Let's just say we like this one right here. Uh, let's preview this. This one is the one. Click on this one. Let's say this was our setup, right? Watch, watch what happens. Okay. If I put this in the bottom here, you won't be able to see it properly. You see this? It's all a mess because it's in the bottom. On the other hand, if you put it on the top, it's going to come much better. You see this? Watch. So this. So the idea is that whichever one you wanted to show up first on the top, when it comes to text effects, images, uh, other objects and stuff, you want to put it on the top layer, meaning the number one track. Uh, if you put it in the bottom, it's going to be a mess. It's not going to play. You see this? It's hidden. It, it shows up and goes away. Watch this. It's not doing a good job, right? See this? But if I put it on the top, it'll always be good. So that's the idea of the layers, in, in other words. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to answer a couple of questions right now, and then I'll leave the recording for you guys to watch, girls to watch later. But what I'm going to do is after this, I'm going to also put up uh, in our uh, tutorial section, I'm going to put up this training. So where that's going to come up is here. You see this right here. I'm going to put this up in the training here in the tutorial section right here. It's going to be here, probably in the bottom. We're going to put it. So watch that there. And I'm going to leave a PDF of exactly the prompts I'm using with ChatGPT and TextWriter and other apps of ours as well. Uh, that you can use. So in the case of TextWriter, folks, for those of you who have TextWriter application of ours uh, from Human Talk or whatever, it's the same concept. Like, uh, for example, what I would do is like, just like how I um, have this right here, this prompt, write me this, it'll just do the same thing, right? If I copy and pasted that into TextWriter application, which was this application here, I'll just bring it up here. So those who have that, right? You can just go to content from prompts, click on advanced prompt mode, right click paste, and then just submit it, boom. And then basically it's gonna create an advanced prompt, then click next. And then thereafter, it's gonna create that same concept with the app as well. So, so you can use either app, you can use this one, or you can use ChatGPT, it doesn't really matter to me personally. I want you to get the best end result, but if you have this one, you can use this one too, okay? Um, but yeah, that's the basic idea. You create the script first, you create the voiceover second, Third, you once the voiceover is done, then you create your scenes, right? Which I did here. If you go back, scroll down here, I created the scene one, scene two, whatever. And each scene in each image, I copied it and I pasted that. And I basically got each scene to come. Okay. So uh, that's the basic idea. Okay. And now the other thing as well that I wanted to mention, so that, that uh, basically, uh, which is, you know, uh, some of the other points is like, I know some people are asking some feature requests and stuff. So we're going to be having a roadmap coming up soon, about a couple of days. Um, we're going to put all the features you folks are requesting right now, maybe 99% of them, because our team is making note of them. And then 
you can vote. I'll announce it, then all of you folks can vote. And based on what you want, we're going to prioritize which where our team can focus on, right? We cannot do all 100 things at once, but maybe the five, six things people really, really want, that'll be prioritized, right? So that's the basic idea. Depending on how quickly it can be done, we're going to prioritize it based on that um, that element. Now, the other uh, thing as well that I mean, uh, I want to do is whenever you log into the app, just make sure that you see to the right, there'll be notifications, okay? The notifications are there so that you know what new updates have been made. Like the object removal one, like if you go in here, you would have seen it, but sometimes you might miss it, right? So we notified you in the app as soon as you logged in, oh, this is a new update you had, right? As soon as you log in, let's say tomorrow or whenever, right? And you'll always find the new tutorials here for those features. So keep an eye on that as well. And of course, this training sessions I have for you from uh, time to time as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is after this one, I'm going to put this one in the tutorial section and also put a quick PDF doc with the prompts that I used in ChatGPT so you can just kind of copy what I'm doing and follow along the process of this. But what I'm going to do in the next training session is go more in depth on it from end to end. Uh, basically, what are things you want to do? What are things you want to look for? Uh, and, and if you're doing, let's say, for example, like this uh, astronaut video that I did, uh, what are the some things to look for, right? Like when you're creating this, what are the voiceover elements you're looking for? Uh, what are the movements? How do you uh, do some things like that? And basically focus on the output more than the actual, you know, nitty gritty details of the script writing and stuff like end to end workflow. That's going to be coming up next. Um, so watch out for that other training session for sure. OK, uh, if you're enjoying this, let me know as well. I see a lot of great comments. So that's great. OK, that's that's awesome. All right. So now a uh, quick point. Um, is basically on this. This is this first training session in terms of like this elements, uh, these elements that I just shared with you. Coming up soon, I'm going to be doing a little bit more end to end in a more uh, crisp manner, how to quickly do these things. It should take you 10, 15 minutes at the tops, maybe even less, and how to create the whole workflow and stuff like that. And as the technology improves, what I'm teaching you, the fundamentals will always be the same. So, for example, if in the future, Let's say now we're creating up to whatever, six, seven seconds or whatever you can do with a, or three to seven seconds, let's say, right? If it becomes 14 seconds in the future, the fundamentals I'm teaching you will actually apply there too, because the scene by scene system, like let's say scene number one, instead of it being here, scene number one might end here, right? But the same thing, whether it's here or whether it's here, the scene, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, the storytelling aspect, the interest, the attention, everything is the same. You know what I mean? Uh, as long as you pay attention, uh, to the whole process, right? So that's the other one, okay? Does that make sense? All right, now the other uh, uh, point that I wanted to uh, basically mention here is <clears throat> some of the uh, features that we're adding in next, okay? I'm going to be revealing them to you as we go along. We have a couple of features that are coming in soon, which is just extraordinarily mind-blowing. I don't want to talk about it right now, but it's just going to be fun. Like it's one of the things that you folks were requesting that's coming up. You're doing some final tests on those. So those will be uh, coming up soon as well. And I'll be unveiling those as well um, coming up. So you don't even have to request in the roadmap. You already know what you folks were requesting on the next uh, last few uh, days. So that I'll be announcing them as well in a couple of days or three days max. Uh, so the next training session is going to be coming up as well, either on in a two or three days from now. Okay. I'll be emailing you folks the reminder. If you're in our Skype group, okay, by the way, I'll give you the Skype group. That's where we're reminding you folks as well in case you don't check your emails properly or whatever. Uh, let me actually give you the link right now. Uh, and by the way, um, so this is our Skype group. So if you folks haven't joined, just make sure you join. I'm just notifying you, okay, this is when the next training session is coming up or whatever. If you need any replays or whatever, that's that's where for these live events, right? Of course, they're all going to be posted in the replay later on. Uh, but that's the other one, okay? So I post the link. That's our group, Skype group. So you can join that as well if you need some notifications. But also I'll be emailing you uh, the next training session. That one is going to be basically two important things. The new features we're going to be adding, which I've not talked about right now, which is almost the final stages. I'm doing some internal testing right now. And then the second thing is uh, about, okay, now how do we use the new features, already existing features, and how do we do an end-to-end -end workflow now that you know the script writing aspect, which is a foundational fundamental thing on how to bring the whole workflow. I'll show you how to bring the whole scene by scene element together. And then after that, the scene by scene element, I'm going to show you, okay, I created the video now. What do we do next? That will be talked about. And also how do we modify some key elements to make your video pop a bit more, right? Uh, like transitions, some animations, maybe you want to add some text effects, captions. So those things I'm going to be talking about as well. Okay. 
So, um, um, and I see a couple of questions. Let me answer them. And then after that, you can watch this replay on YouTube. You can watch this on our Facebook group. And also, of course, we're going to upload this into our tutorials tab in our in the application on the top right here. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see here. Okay. All right. So the good question that came in, how are often are these live training sessions? So as I mentioned to you earlier, the goal will be to do as many as needed to get you to the finish line. Uh, the idea is that I'm focusing on about another four or five major features we're adding into the app in the next uh, uh, coming days and weeks. So until those are in, because I want to make sure the foundational features are ready, uh, meaning in terms of these new things you haven't even heard about yet. So then I'll talk about those as well as we go along. The key point will always be with these trainings. It's not about putting a limit on like, okay, it's only going to be five or six or seven or whatever, more so to the fact that it's going to be about, did I drive home the point of how to use the application properly? And also how do you using the new updates we made properly? And of course, the other point being, okay, did you get the aspect of how you use the application, right? If I need five for that, I'll do five, seven, whatever, right? Because right now I, I taught you how to do script writing. The next one we'll be focusing on, okay, now you got the script, you got the voiceover, what do we do next? How do we create the scenes end to end, right? Then, okay, you got that now. Okay, now what do you do next? In social media, what platforms require what kind of content, right? Like if you're creating a YouTube short, it's different from a TikTok, right? Uh, a short, uh, a TikTok reel, let's say. Some small components change. If you're creating a newsfeed video for Facebook, uh, to let's say a YouTube video, completely different, right? You might create the exact same video, but change a few things. So that's gonna be the next part, right? And then the other one will be about, okay, now you have all these features, how would a practical use case work, right? Let's say for example, you're creating a video uh, in different ways. Like how do you add proper call to actions? Like if you're creating a 45 second video or a minute long video, how do you create a proper uh, call to action? Because you don't have much time, right? <laughs> Uh, so those are the things we're going to be talking about. So they're going to build on top of each other, okay? And as new features come in, I'll show you how to integrate those new features with my training so that what you learned, how do we build on top of it? Like say, for example, we talked about today how object remote would work, how in-painting would work with your uh, pipeline, right? Like or in your workflow, so to speak here. So like if your workflow is, for example, like this, right? How... Like say for example, where would background music come into the play into the picture uh, picture here, or where like uh, where do I put transitions right? How do I make it more interesting? Where do I put call to action? So basically, that's the idea. So if I didn't like some element um, in one of my videos, how do I in paint it out? I like everything, but I don't like one element. How do I basically remove that element or add some elements? So these are the things that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, specifically for all the projects you create. So then you have an action plan, right? Like say, for example, this one right here, I don't like this, <laughs> whatever it is. Well, you can in paint this thing out, right? Basically, that's the basic concept of what we're trying to achieve um, with e every feature effectively, um, because it should help you not confuse you. You know what I mean? Like you may never even need to use the in painting feature other than maybe a couple of times you know, in a month or something. But they still have value for certain use cases, right? So that's what I'm going to be teaching you uh, specifically as we go along, okay? Uh, now, now the other uh, one as well is that I will be um, uh, I will be basically uh, focusing on these end-to-end -end creation aspects, and also I'll be focusing on specifically the features and how to integrate them all together, right? So that'll be the idea. So of course, after this live session is done, be sure to ask your questions in our Facebook group or. Uh, and that sort of thing. We'll be happy to take a look at it and answer if we cannot. If not, obviously, you can email our support team, which is basically support at videoexpress.ai. You see that in the shirt. But I'll leave the support email as well for you folks can check it out. Um, let me actually do that right now. Um, but the point is uh, so that if you have any questions with my team after this call is done, you can definitely ask us uh, here. Okay, that's the email support at videoexpress.ai. Uh, now, the other thing I wanted to mention here real quick is this is a, one of the training sessions. We have other ones as well. You'll love the other training sessions as well because it's all about specifically how to use the application. It's not going to be mumbo jumbo stuff, but more importantly, how, okay? And if you haven't already, go definitely watch my copywriting um, training, which is free. This one was the link, remember? Uh, so uh, that was my copywriting course, uh, which is pony.com copywriting. Definitely watch it. If you already watch it, refresh it just so that it'll help you be better at creating videos with the right kind of copy and that sort of thing. Cool. 
All right. So, uh, and again, if you have any questions with our support team and stuff, we'll be happy to assist you after this call is done as well. Let us know there. We'll be happy to do so. The next training session should be coming up soon. Uh, it will give you enough ample reminders so you can show up. Uh, and that one will also have new updates. So new features we'll be adding that is not currently in the app right now, okay? So that's going to be fun as well. So watch out for my emails as well because we're doing some final touches, final testing for those. So once I'm unveiling, it will be in your account already, okay, when I go live. So that's going to be awesome as well. So uh, and, and, of course, our roadmap and other cool things coming up. So uh, I look forward to seeing you on those ones, okay? Um, so take care. Good luck. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Uh, if you have any questions, email our support team there. Uh, and, of course, We'll be happy to assist you, but watch out for my other trainings coming up. I'll leave a replay for this one in our uh, tutorials tab. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, with this one right here, the tutorials tab, watch out for that one there, uh, along with, of course, the PDF on how to replicate the prompts I've used and stuff. Okay, so take care, good luck, and I'll talk to you soon.